Hello, welcome to my latest video. Well, in this one, I'm going to review a microphone. This microphone from Mayono, which I believe is the right way to pronounce it, is a cardio dynamic mic. And it comes with a tabletop stand and a few other accessories that I'll show you when I open it up. I haven't opened it up yet. But it was sent to me, to full disclosure, to do a review on. And I'm gonna do a full honest review of this and compare it to my other two uh, high-end microphones that I have both of which are USB type mics. So I'm going to use this one in its USB mode, even though it also supports XLR mode. Hopefully you get something out of this video. And if you do, if you could at least consider subscribing to my channel, that would be very helpful. Well, let's get started. Okay, here's the Mayono Cardioid Dynamic USB slash XLR microphone, model AU HD 300T. I'll put up on the screen here, the Amazon ad for this. If you're interested in getting one after you see this review, I do like this brand. The microphone that I'm using right now, my lapel mic, actually both of my lapel mics are from the same company and they've served me extremely well. So I have really have no complaints about it at all. A lot of stuff on the box here. They talk about a lot of different features that come along with it. I already mentioned the USB XLR. It has a, a built-in, what they refer to as an audio processor, which is really a preamp, which is a good thing to have, as I've talked about in a previous video, and a few other features here, which I hopefully will be able to talk about a little bit more as we get into this. On the back, they get a lot of details. Shows you all of the different features to it, and also the response diagram, the audio response diagram, and the pickup from the microphone itself, the cardioid, pattern. It also has what I really like here is a volume control. Plus and a minus, those two buttons allow you to up or lower the volume. So that's a good thing to have when you're uh, connected up. We'll see if this is capable of running without any software preamp. Let me go ahead now and open this thing up. What do we got in here? Well, we got some interesting paperwork, a thank you card. Looks like there's a manual here. I'll read through that. It's in color. I love that. So we'll see about what's in there in a few minutes. We've got the microphone itself, it looks like right here. It's actually a pretty handsome little microphone, I think. All black, with the exception of these letters here. Here's the plus and the minus. Those are each separate buttons. It's got a power on, power off button. I assume it draws the power from the USB or the uh, XLR, depending on which one you have connected. That's basically it. Standard top. Uh, windbreaker in general, a, a really rough windbreaker. Let's see what else is in here, though. Looks like this is part of the desk stand that they give you. It already has the adapter on it to convert from the two different size threads that microphones tend to have. What's it got in here? Oh, an XLR cable. That's always nice to have. Let's see how long that is. Seems like it's about 10 feet long. That's the way I estimate it right now. So I break it in half, yeah. Well, it might be eight feet. I can measure it out exactly in a couple of minutes and I'll put it on the bottom of this screen on the video. What do we got in here? Oh, this looks like part of the pop filter. Looks like the holder for it. Yep, piece of metal, stainless steel it looks like, for the pop filter. Then we got here, we got the, uh, the anti-vibration holder. It's all plastic at this point. Whereas this here, the microphone itself, looks like it's all steel. It feels that way. It's definitely all metal, whether it's steel or some sort of anodized aluminum. I'm not sure at this point, but it's got a really nice weight to it. This is just plastic. I guess the mic would go in between these squares here, and it would allow you to buffer the vibrations that may occur so they don't get transferred to the microphone. Pretty standard way of doing it. It's very small, though, which means it's going to have limited capability to really buffer. Put that aside. What do we got here? Oh, we got a USB cable, too. I'll leave this folded in half. It's easier to estimate. Again, it's probably about eight feet because it looks like half folded over. It's about four feet. And then we got the pop filter in here. Is it two of them? Oh, well, maybe two of them. And here's the base for the stand that they give you. And that's really all there is in the box. So they give you two pop filters. They're kind of small. This is, uh, looks like it's only about uh, two and a half, three inches in diameter. Most of the pop filters are at least four inches. So it's a little bit on the small side, but it'd be less in your face, I guess, if you're doing live streaming. These two look exactly the same. So if one gets soiled too much, or if you wanna share your microphone with somebody else, you could change this. You know, write your name on it somewhere and uh, be able to sh share it so that your, your mouth doesn't uh, connect too close to that. What I don't see is, I don't see the uh, the standard air air filter slash pop filter combination. 
I actually may have extras of those, so I'll take a look and find out if I have them. If I do, when I set it up, I'll put it on. But that's where the pop filter comes in to keep you know, the, the wind from hitting the microphone condenser uh, and they're leading to pops in the sound. So anyway, that's what's in the box. Let me put it together. I guess this goes here. Yeah, it looks like you have to take this connector off. Save these adapters. They're very, very handy. I actually had to use one in a previous video that came with my Blue Yeti microphone. Having this can save you a lot. And you wind up paying, you know, three or four dollars if you tried to buy it, like from Amazon. <laughs> And if I shake it, you can see the shock mount does slow it down. Okay, let me go ahead now and test this and uh, compare it to the other microphones that I have. And I'll use it in USB mode, as I said earlier, so we get a fair comparison. This is the Blue Yeti Nano. Let me start testing this one out. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog's back. Testing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now I'm testing the Samson microphone. The quick Brown fox jumped over the lazy dog's back. Testing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now I'm testing the headset from Corsair. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog's back. Testing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now I'm testing the Mayono microphone with the pop filter on. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog's back. Testing, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now configured equalizer APO to attach to the Mayoni dynamic microphone. Let's see how this sounds now. Okay, that completes this quick review of the Mayono cardioid dynamic microphone. It did fairly good. I actually liked the sound. The only thing is I had to go through the... Um, equalizer APO to get the sound up to the level that I really wanted it to have. Same problem I had with my uh, Corsair headset was also a problem with this one. The things to note about this that I didn't mention before is it does have a connector, a regular 3.5 millimeter connector, so you can put a headset on it and monitor what you're saying. The actual volume control that's up here is for that. It's not for adjusting the microphone sound. So you have to keep that in mind, just like most of the other microphones. The, the volume control on the mics tend to be for the headset, not for the volume coming into the preamp of the microphone. So I just wanted to point that out. So hopefully you got something out of this video, and if you did, you would at least consider subscribing to my channel. Well, until the next time, take care, and be safe and be healthy.